There's nothing like this initial feeling when the wheels are off the ground and you can yeah, just Michael's see forever. For Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed is alive. We're waiting on 59 knots. Just maintaining center line. So here's 59. I'm going to slowly ease back. And wheels are up. There's nothing like uh, a view from the air, my man. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Tennessee is a pretty looking state, I'll tell you what. It is. It is. So when I'm flying, I'm just using very small control movements. You know, I'm not jerking the airplane around. It's right. a great flying airplane. Uh, while we're up here, this is essentially where I'll give you the flight controls and you fly it around. Just trying to keep close to four. Um, or whatever it takes. So you have the flight controls here. I've got flight controls. All right, you have the flight controls. Out. So you are flying an airplane. As a student, we want to instill that. You want to 80% be looking outside for traffic, for hazards, stuff like that. And then just look inside every now and then. So you get used to working with instruments and seeing what they should say. So at this point, if they're enjoying the flight more, we can do a little bit of maneuvering if they want to see that or go back and do some landings uh, showing the airport, the area, and then maybe if they live close by, flying over their house. You know, everybody oh, yeah. likes to see their house from the air, <laughs> you know, do some circles around it. So That's right, man. That's, that's really cool. Do you get a lot of local students or, you know, what is that demographic look like for you guys? It's really from everywhere. I mean, there's all kinds of places where people come through and I, I don't see a set we mainly get these type of students, you know, gotcha. it's a pretty diverse group, but it makes a great flying experience because you get to work with different varieties of learning experiences. And also you get to teach different things. So as a flight instructor, when you get up in your ratings, you can not only teach private, but you can teach the instrument students or the multi-engine students, which it's great. So it never gets, it never gets really boring or tiresome, tired, you know? Right, you're always learning. Because if you're teaching, you're learning as well, right? Absolutely. You learn the most through teaching someone uh, than you can just by, you know, studying a book. So it's a relatively docile flying airplane. It's pretty yeah. simple, pretty easy to fly. You feel that kind of pull in your seat a little? Yeah, for sure. And roll out here on north. How's that? That's, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> oh, not too bad. We just get it over to about 45, 55 degrees of bank and just let it roll. Do you feel that slight shift right there? Yeah. That's your own wake turbulence that you hit. Oh, right, really? Right through the same path no. you just went through. <laughs> you should feel that and that'll be a perfect steep turn. Oh, that's awesome. Now, is there any point in time where you're going through a process where you're taking a student up and you're like, listen, we're gonna go through some maneuvers and we're trying to get you to, to go to kind of your extremes. Again, it's your own personal threshold where you're at. So it may be extreme to you, to do steep turns, but it's just a maneuver that you need to do to be able to control the aircraft. Right. Let's say you look up and there's an aircraft in front of you, you're 2,000 feet off the ground, you don't want to descend, don't want to climb, but you need to avoid him. So for right-of-way rules, what you want to do to avoid that head-on collision is give way to the right. right. So you're going to bank to the right, but keep at the horizon the whole time. So I could see that being an instance of when you would use that. Right. Uh, power on stalls, power off stalls, slow flight. If you can fly the aircraft in those situations and recover from a bad spot, that's like you're coming in to land and you stall. Or if you're taking off and you stall. Okay. So that just puts you in that situation where you go, oh, it's stalling, but I know what I need to do to recover. Right, exactly. So it doesn't matter if you're 500 feet off the ground. If it's stalling and your nose up, get the nose down. Uh, the biggest thing is to get them uh, the ratings, the licenses, get them to be a qualified pilot, no matter where they go. Uh, it's not just the airlines, you know, because you can do so much with aviation. You've got charter flying, you've got the airlines, you have uh, FedEx, UPS, you know, if you want to fly packages, DHL, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Is there anything that sets MCSU apart? As far as setting us apart from everyone else, not only the reduced hour requirement, you know, uh, being part 141 instead of 61, that really helps. So the ratings are going to come a lot faster. Typically, every three months, you're going to have a new license or a new rating. Wow. So in three months, you've got the private. The next semester, you've got private with an instrument rating. The next semester, you have a commercial rating. Next semester, you have commercial with multi-engine. Multi, you can do in about two weeks with really good weather. Wow, uh, that's awesome. TFI, you can do it in about a month and a half.
and uh, CF double I is about two weeks again with good weather, and then MEI, two uh, weeks again with good weather. Start your turn to camp. Uh, as an instructor, as you get your ratings and you move on to instructing here, uh, it's not like another flight school where you go out and you sit and you wait for people to show up. Here, you get assigned students, and so for when you're assigned students, they have to meet four times a week. Not only does that help with you getting flight hours as the teacher, but it also helps the student with recency. So, if you just did this flight yesterday, you do it again tomorrow, you're going to remember a lot more versus someone who flew once last week, and then once next week, and then once next week. That's where it takes you a year to get a private pilot. Right, uh, we're good. Uh, it's it's down on like really, it's, it's uh, kind of crazy. Out. Oh yeah, so those uh, little bitty Yeah, eight six is on, so we're on a 45 right now. There you go. Now, what we want to do when we get down here is just hold Mike, level. You got the okay. uh, so, I'll be with you on uh, the controls. I'll touch more to the right here. There you go. Right of that. Just wanted to see if you were that to making ready to we, we were behind you now. Air one, two, I'm going to pull power because we're over the runway. For runway okay. three, six, that to say, come in. Right here, just wait. No traffic, hold down, level. Down, when it starts to settle, six, we'll ease road. back. So, real slow. Real slow. There we go. Within... I would say three flights you're taking off, and usually at about 15 to 20 hours, you're starting to land by yourself. Wow, that's that's pretty awesome. My man. Excellent. <laughs> Great job, man. That was awesome. Good stuff. Uh, so thanks so much I for taking flying, us off. And uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it as well. I have last I enjoy it just as much on this flight as I did my first. So a big thanks to all those guys down there at MTSU for bringing us along. We had a blast. Now if you're thinking about making your passion your profession, then make sure to check out MTSU. Check out the links below as well and we'll see you guys next time.